Ross, much like many training units in Fire Emblem, is one of those characters that has so much potential to be one of your best units. In Fire Emblem Sacred Stone, he's probably the one axe users most players go to in most of their runs. But the question that remains for me is, can I beat Fire Emblem Sacred Stones using only Ross? Well, the rules are simple. I can only use Ross, obviously. I have to play the game on a hard mode. I can only bring a single healing item per map. I am not allowed to use a supply convoy for more healing items. I'm only allowed to use it for more weapons. If I do have more healing items, I find them through the natural ways of the game, either through a shop on the map, a village, a chest, an enemy drop, and so on and so forth. And no exploits, no grinding. Can it be done? Well, you'll have to watch to find out. Before I get further in this video, I'd like to give a huge shout out to everybody who watched the Erica solo run. I was not expecting it to do that good, but all y'all that watched it, thank you so much. You guys rock. If you want to see more solo runs like this one or the Erica one, feel free to drop a sub on the channel. My goal is to go through as many Fire Emblem solo run as I can or any other challenge runs that I can find. So, you know, if you're into that stuff, Drop a sub helps me out tremendously. Now that that's out of the way, let me direct your attention to Ross's inventory because as you can see, I managed to start the game with Ross. What I did here is I used Effie Builder to switch out Ross with Erica. I copied all of Ross's stats, starting level, growth rates, inventory. So I put him in place of Erica so that she would have access to the supply convoy, much like Erica did in our solo run. So that way it's one-to-one -one equal in terms of comparison. So as the prologue goes on behind us, you may be noticing that Ross has a master shield in his inventory and you may be like, well, Ross doesn't have that usually and you'd be right but the reason i put the master seal there is because there's a bug with training units it seems in fire emblem sacred stones the training units are coded to promote in the preparation phase of the next level after they reach level 10 so the next chapter after you reach level 10 usually a little screen will pop up tell you you can promote and then you'll choose your class however when you start the game you don't get preparation stage until chapter 4 but ross is going to hit level 10 before chapter 4 and i think something happens between each levels that if that screen doesn't pop up, the game will never have you pop it up on any level whatsoever. So Ross would be destined to stay a level 10 trainee the entire time, but because that's not really what we're looking to do here, I decided to add to his inventory a master seal. So to keep it kind of equivalent, I'm not gonna be using it mid-level, even if he reaches level 10 mid-level, I'm not gonna be using the master seal, I'll use that really after the level itself to kind of keep it equivalent to what would happen normally with a training unit. So Ross's early game isn't fantastic, which you may be seen in the background being killed by these warriors over and over again. The first chapter and the prologue will require a certain level of luck because he will not dodge consistently their attacks. And to explain that, let's look at Ross's starting stats because they are less than stellar, which makes sense given that he's a training unit. That's the goal. He's supposed to get good potential, but really bad starting stats. His best stat is going to be strength starting with five strength but with nothing else really standing out low speed plus low con while using axes is usually a bad combo because axes are some of the heaviest weapons in the game so yeah you'll be unlikely to double units at the start and even his avoid stat is going to take a hit there so where ross should be shining usually is because he has a high ceiling right like good potential well when you look at his growth right here you don't see anything to go crazy over. Like 50% growth rate and strength is good, but it's not stellar. But yeah, nothing else is going to be great. Just usually look at those stats and you're like, they're kind of middling. But he does get those extra 10 levels being a training unit, which ends up making up somewhat for the middling growth stats he's going to have. But yeah, I'm going to be honest with you guys, after seeing those and struggling on the prologue as much as I did, I'm starting to worry a little bit that this run might not be as easy as I had anticipated because I really thought this was going to be a walk in the park. And now I'm, you know, walking that back a little. But as you can see, I can manage to the prologue here. My, your best bet will be to go at the back there and hide in the forest. Put Ross in the forest, that way he is going to increase his avoid and his defense a little bit. The bandits will have a harder time hitting him. And they'll also ignore Seth that you can put on the other side. I don't know why they ignore him. I don't know how the AI works perfectly, but I think it has something to do with the highest chance of hitting or doing the highest damage first. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, if anybody knows how the AI works in M Fire Emblem and Sacred Stone, feel free to drop it in the comments. I'd love to know. So the fun thing about this is, as you can see, it, once you're done with this, uh, you're almost halfway through your promotion. So the next point of interest will come directly in the form of chapter one because 
it's also a hard chapter the best thing you can do is go to the unique terrain the houses the forest the forts something i also wanted to discuss is the soldier you're seeing run up to ross right now on screen a lot of people pointed it out in the comments and honestly i really cannot explain it this soldier doesn't attack on the first hit he will go for seth sometimes but unless you're in killing range with your you know lord unit quote unquote because i did switch out ross with erica he doesn't seem to attack yeah if you know why this guy doesn't attack unless you're kind of in a kill range let me know because that's interesting it's a weird little i don't know if it's a glitch but yeah it's a weird little quirk so yeah, we'll skip ahead to the boss because once you've gone through everything, it's kind of easy to dodge and you have the range advantage on Brigette. So you might be able to easily take him out. Oh, wait, that's not a lot of damage. That's two per hit. Let's see. I mean, I think we can do this. You know, he's going to hit. He's going to heal one of them from the fort, but, you know, eventually we'll chip at him, right? Well, not necessarily because um, we do get him down to low HP, but our hatchet breaks and we have no more axes we use too much of it hmm well okay well maybe it's just we got bad strength growth here you know let's let's try again let's go for another try you know let's see if that's better oh god okay that does that that's a problem that is definitely a problem so are we blocked already at the start of the game well, the answer to that is, is no, we're not. What happened is we got pretty abysmal luck in terms of our level ups. So to kill Brigitte consistently, we need at least 10 strength, which will translate to about three damage per hit, which means out of the 10 level Ross will have in his pre-promote, he's going to need to have five of them minimum B strength, which is is average technically he has a 50 percent growth rate in strength so on 10 levels he should get five strength we got extremely unlucky i do end up resetting here completely and starting the prologue again which i do pretty well the reason i do that is because on this first save i only got one point in strength i went into chapter one at level five with six strength which meaning i only got a single point which means that to get that 10 strength I'm looking for, I would have to reset chapter one over and over again to get four points and I only have five level le left. So I need to be near perfect in my level up. So I allow myself to reset entirely and do that test off the prologue, meaning that I will try the prologue a couple of times to get the right growth to be about around seven or eight once leaving the prologue. That way I give myself a little bit more room to get that minimum 10 strength. And I end up hitting eight strength from another prologue entering chapter one but i want to quickly look at the comparison between both the rosses at level 10 the first one that we got and this one that we're on so we do get the 10 strength that we wanted but all in all we do end up looking a little worse for wear better strength better speed but all the other stats are looking either the same or lower so you know i'm not worried about it but technically we're a little bit worse for wear but at the end of the day it doesn't matter because we end up killing brigade here and now that we're on the world map it's promo time baby so here my decision comes down to two simple factor nothing else than berserker or hero because the war promotion which you can get from both the pirate and the fighter doesn't provide any advantage. It only gives you access to bows. And with Ross, bows aren't that useful because you'll have access to and axes for range. But you also have, you know, the fact that most flyers in the game are a lance unit. You already have the advantage over the weapon triangle over them. You're never going to really run into problems with flyers. So the bows become quite useless. So it comes down to berserker or hero. So do we want the versatility and the mastery over the weapon triangle by adding the use of swords to our arsenal, which would be really good for Ross because because his constitution is going to remain quite low-ish and using swords are a little lighter so it's going to make him a little bit more consistent on doubling and stuff like that so i think the hero may be really good but the berserker provides us a base plus 15 crit and the ability to walk on water and mountains a little bit more versatility on movement so i still think the hero might be better but personally i always promote my ross to a berserker no matter what i do and i think a lot of people are like me ross has to be a berserker because he's the only one other than dolza that can become a berserker in the game and Dolza's not that great so usually your go-to berserker is ross right even though it might bite us back in the butt we're gonna go with ross as a berserker and you know what that extra 15 percent crit may come in handy so our ross is gonna be a nice little pirate yar so beyond that point the game is pretty easy for a little bit ross won't have the highest avoid and may not double everyone at first but after a level or two he'll just blow through the entire game quite handily 
No, we'll pick up a second Ross from chapter two, but we'll bench him and we won't use him. His hatchet will also be stayed in his inventory. We will not be using his hatchet since technically there's only one in the game you can get. And technically it was supposed to be the one we had at the start, but it was a little bit too much messing around in FE Builder for me to remove Ross's stuff. So I decided to keep it that way and just keep it in the inventory and not really think about it. So we'll pick up the keys on chapter three as we did in the previous one and we'll get it immediately stolen by a thief. Okay, well, that that, that is that. But you know, we'll make work work of everything in chapter three, chapter four. Four. Even chapter five is going to be easy because I don't have to worry about recruiting Joshua this time. I can just kill him. And I'll only be focused on the House of Dragon Shield and Secret Book since I don't need any of the others. The torch is fine. I don't need that. The Armor Slayer, I don't need that. So chapter five becomes a lot easier with Ross than it did with Erica. And I'll be able to boost my defense and skill stat using both those items, which are going to be needed for Ross because he has the greatest growth in those stats. Chapter 5x will be, you know, easy we pick up the key is again we don't really care about it we can't use ross on this one we move on past it all right while we're on chapter six we'll take a minute to see how easy ross runs through the early game i'll let you guys look in the background as i look at our level 20 pirate because ross will hit level 20 on that map let's take a minute to look at what the good gods of growth gave us all in all we got some pretty good rolls here we have five more hp than we should with 41 max strength as we should so maxed out a level at 20 at level 20 our skills should technically be a little higher since we the secret book but 12 ain't bad you know it ain't nothing to worry about our slate speed is slightly above where it should be our luck and defense really are standing out here with 22 and 16 respectively that's not really normal and even if you don't account for the dragon shield use i would still be three points over where i should be so you know, this is actually pretty good for us. And our res is with an average. I wasn't expecting anything crazy there. So I'm generally happy with the Ross we have here because at the moment, he's doing really good. He's got everything where it needs to be and a little above in some other places. He can tank a little bit better than I'd expected since his defense actually ended up being really all right. So moving on to chapter seven, I only want to bring it up here because I kind of end up saving a lot of time because I use the pirate class to my advantage here. I go up and use the river to traverse uh, directly to the boss fight. So for those who aren't really familiar with the river planes in the GBA games, the river planes in the game can be crossed by infantry units, but they give a negative five movement penalty making most base classes unable to traverse them because they have exactly five movements. But pirates have an advantage where that movement penalty is only negative two, making their movement across them three, so they can traverse the rivers easily because you know they have the advantage of be able to walk on water so that's why the movement penalty is reduced so i take ross up there and i just kind of skip 90 percent of the map and just go straight to the boss and we make quick work of the map and we cut down on a lot of turns and a bunch of time so on chapter eight i end up taking an alternative route from the one i took with erica because i don't need any of the chests on the left side so i can go straight to the right after saving ephraim i go straight to the rooms of the night and kind of make quick work of them they will not hurt me that much i will pick up the angelic rope here which may be a waste of a key because my health is actually pretty high right now we may end up maxing it out naturally but i take it just in case i don't want to be missing out on health later on but anywho i make directly for the boss room and get my damn vulnerary stolen by a thief so now i'm out of healing items i'm at the boss room i'm surrounded by mages and i make the smart decision of you know what let's just go fight the boss you know let's let's hope we get lucky all right so lord turdo not that bad he does use his defense there but you know he's gonna heal on the throne gonna attack us we're gonna dodge him but we have our out of hand hexes the problem is those mages are almost 50 percent chance to hit with a lot of damage because my res is bad oh i'm at 8 h proof no health i stand in the golem Let, let's just go for it you know let's let's just go for it let's try to kill terado using the iron axe because you know we can double with it because of our low con and average speed won't be able to use the steel axe to double but let's let's do it you know he's not really gonna hit us but the problem is not him it's not him. He's not the problem. We make quick work of him. It's these guys. Look at that. One of them hits me and I'm done. I'm so... Oh my god. This is a bad idea. I should have definitely taken my time and moved smartly. But let's hope we are... Uh, okay, two more. Two more. Oh, we dodge. Okay. One more. God. Okay. Oof. Okay, so that means we win the map because we can seize. That wasn't the smartest decision. But at the end of the day, it's fine. We did it, okay? Maybe take a little bit more of your time. We did save a couple of turns there, but it wasn't the smartest decision. All right, so beyond that point, we get to the route split, and we'll go with Erica's route. And there's two reasons for this. The first one being that I did switch Ross with Erica, so it would kind of get rid of our Ross if we went with Ephraim's route, because the game considers Ross as Erica, so we'd be kind of, a, of in a pickle. The second reason is I'm trying to compare these runs from one another, give them like a ranking or whatever. And the best way to do that 
that is for each character to go through the same route. So naturally, we're going to go through Erica's route. So chapter nine will be significant because this is where you finally get your first ocean seal of the game, which allows Ross to reach his advanced promotion of Berserker. We get a, so we get a brand new spanking Berserker. Very nice. And Ross will start going through this game pretty easily i actually try this map a couple of times because the middle house actually has a secret book that i kind of want but it keeps getting destroyed by the pirates because i can't move fast enough towards that house to save it my thought at this point is maybe the only way to save it is through a flyer or a cavalier unit but i guess we'll have to find that out in a future run you'll also see me recruit amelia and the reason for that is so that it can grab her speed wing because i kind of want to boost ross's speed since it's nothing that crazy i can get an extra speed wing and get a little bit more speed that way so using the water i can get to her quicker than i would otherwise and i can just kind of talk to her get the speed ring and move on other than that the boss is not notable here nothing is really notable ross will just have an easy time but so i'll rapid fire these next few map because again nothing notable really happens given ross's good strength and average defense he'll keep having a very easy time to the point where i don't think i use a single potion until chapter 15. so when i get to chapter 10 i try my new fun ability of walking over mountains as a berserker and skip like 90 percent of the map to be fair i actually think this was slower than you know opening the door and approaching it from the other side but hey I skip like a lot of fights and I get to Pablo quite easily really. So as you'll see here, despite having an easy time generally, we actually get kind of lucky with Pablo because his hit rate isn't stellar. And you can see he can do a lot of damage because Ross's res is pretty bad. So I still end up getting lucky and hitting him twice with like a 57% chance to hit. So, you know, we get we get good luck here, but you know, you can see that I can get damaged pretty easily by magic in it, which is something to keep in mind for later down the line. Chapter 11 is very, very easy. We kind of clear it without an itch. The only adjustment I make from when I did the Erica run is I go through the castle. That way I can reach the chest on the right side there and grab the secret book, which will up again my skills. So trying to get as many of the secret books as I can. When it comes to chapter 12, I pretty much just kill everything. So I still recruit Ewan for his energy ring because recruiting him is not getting out of the way that much. And I get an extra energy ring in case the growth doesn't go my way. So I'm just thinking ahead and maybe I'll be in trouble. So I get it. It shouldn't become a problem but you know we'll see that later down the line at this point ross is doing such a good job and having it so easy i decided to shave off a couple of turn off chapter 13 by simply taking that alias on the fifth turn instead of waiting for 11 turns and nice i, I get a crit this is beyond ridiculous Th this map it wasn't hard in the first place but it became even easier somehow so i don't know ross is just really good chapter 14 was kind of a cathartic experience for me after erica who struggled so mightily here i just go with ross and run through the chapter and take maybe one hit all the way through so he just blows through the chapter without the slightest bit of trouble that is until we make it to carlisle who being a sword user will have a definite advantage so you can see here 39 percent chance to hit he is 62 he might get hit but that's when i think wait a minute i picked up something at the start of this level yes there's a guy who drops a sword reaver so that means oh how the turntables you know carlisle you don't really stand a chance anymore but we'll, we'll we'll give you a chance you know you can try to hit me try to hit me oh, okay I, i'm the one who missed there okay we'll try it again you know we'll try it again it's there's no no real suspense here we all know what's, what's gonna happen there was that hint of maybe trouble but we got through it easily so for those who are quite eagle eye here you may have seen my last level up i got to level 15 and you may have seen where my strength is lying my strength at level 15 is only at 25, meaning that throughout the 15 last levels, I only got five points in strength through level ups. I haven't used any of the energy rings yet, and that is far below normal growth rates for Ross, which I was a little concerned about. I was starting to wonder, like, what's going on here? I'm not getting that growth anymore. So I decided to do one thing. I backtracked to the start of the level to the room on the left where the two chests are. That way I can grab an extra energy ring just in case, you know, we don't get lucky in our next level ups because we only have five left. We could get a perfect slate, but I'm not taking that chance. I'll pick up the second energy ring. That way I can kind of assure almost myself to get that 30 strength that is going to be so crucial for Ross. And it's time for the infamous chapter 15. So with Ross on this one, we won't run into some major issues really, but we do take some significant damage on this map for like the first time in a while. We've just been kind of running through, barely using any vulnerabilities. The reason behind that is we start running into stronger magic users, which Ross is going to have a struggle with, and some promoted units, which will start hitting a little bit more consistently. 
So once again, we have do so grab Ephraim and fortify somewhere safe so that Ephraim doesn't die and we don't end up hurting any of the enemy units. That way, Ross can solo the map by himself. But the same doesn't go for Null, our good friend Null, who gets critted into oblivion. Sorry, Null. Actually, no, I'm not. Thanks to someone who commented on the last video, we managed to minimize the amount of units who are going to break their weapons on Dusel by making him fortify on the village instead of the fort. So, less enemy units will attack him. This time, I go for Kalik first, who's really just a joke. Even though we can't crit him because of his Hooplin guard, we'll take him out handily and show him that despite having a silver axe, we are still the better axe user. Better luck next time, Kalik. And then we'll make our way down to the massive force surrounding Dusel around that village. On my way there, I end up picking up the body ring, which as many of you pointed out in the last video, I forgot to actually pick up for Erica. So this time I fix my mistake and actually pick it up uh, to help out with our constitution. And once that is done, we'll make our way to the right, pick up the Swift Soul and a Metastome. I know the Metastome is kind of useless at this point. We only have like five levels left to go, but pick it up either way. It may come in handy a little bit. And then we make our way to our very good friend, Valter, which in my opinion is one of the most satisfying kill in all of the game. I don't know why, maybe it's just his terrible personality, but he's so much fun to just murder. So as you can see, I assess my options here, but we all know I'm going to go for the dragon axe because that's going to be the play. Also, side note, it's always funny seeing the characters called Ross Erica because I didn't change any of the dialogue, so it's kind of kind of funny. Oh, and would you look at that one hit KO. Get out of here, you scum. No pierce for you today. Let's move on to the next one. So chapter 15, while being such an integral part of Erica's run, isn't that much for Ross. I do end up dying once though, but that's because I attempt some shenanigans and try boss rushing, which is not the right play at all. So after a series of terrible decision and just trying to go for the boss as quickly as possible and forgetting that I have a Tomahawk and Talisman to pick up, so I need to take my time to pick those two up, I get hit by a 30% flux. Okay, that's what's gonna take me out. All right, video game, I see how it is. So let's adjust our strategy and be a little smarter about all of this. So I end up looping from underneath to go pick up the Tomahawk and then I'll take out the thief later for the talisman when he's gonna have it stolen and slowly make our way to the boss room. I do try to avoid as many of the enemies as possible because I don't really need to fight them. So as we make our way to the boss, I will keep the gameplay in the background as we look at our level 20 Ross. By the way, quick aside before I get to that, are you guys seeing all these crits? Am I the only one seeing all these crits? Holy heck, this doesn't feel right. <laughs> So what you're seeing right now is the stats after using both of the energy ring, which I didn't think I was going to need, and the talisman we pick up in this level. First off, let's look at the skill and speed are looking pretty average, but keep in mind we use a speed wing and two secret books, so our skill is technically far below where it should be. But overall, our Ross is fantastic, topping off his luck all the way above where it should be, despite using only one goddess icon, maxing his health, maxing his defense, and having a few points above where he should be in resistance. Overall, we're looking really good. Let's address the elephant in the room, shall we? Our strength is 29. We use two energy ring, which means our base strength ended up only receiving six points in the 20 level since his pirate promotion. We got extremely unlucky, but we ended up like getting lucky in other stats. So all in all, luckily we did pick up the energy rings because that could have been bad. I thought it was extremely interesting to point out because usually your Ross is gonna max out his strength. If anything, not his defense, his strength but we get a slightly tankier ross and that does a little bit less damage i guess that's that's a payoff oh yeah and orson and you're gonna eat a crit buddy goodbye sir see you never all right time to move on to chapter 17 which is a breeze yeah, chapter 17 is a breeze. you get the leon very quickly using our ability to walk on water and then tomahawk him in the face a couple of times but as you can see if we got somewhat unlucky because of his damage it's gonna have gone south quite quickly but you know we end up inching it out because ross is kind of a kind of a good character like that he's, he's very strong he's doing very good right now so getting to chapter 18 i'm expecting this to not be much of a problem oh but these gorgons can do a lot of damage for ross but they don't have a lot of hit rates right so we should be fine so let's oh oh they they can hit okay so if they hit we're a little bit in danger here okay i guess we'll give it another shot right so we go from up top first this time around. The main problem we seem to have with these guys are the resistance. Uh, it's a little low and they do a lot of magic damage. But overall, we should be fine, right? Yeah, we're going to dodge this stone. That's going to be easy. Hit me with that other stone. That's fine. No problem. E the low hit rate is going to be 
our kind of saving grace here we do do a lot of damage then we can clear them out you know usually quite quickly uh you know even though they can do 16 damage 35 percent hit we should dodge most of the time not using a lot of potions so far and oh we got hit by stone and uh, that oh what just happened oh my did we just get double crit in a row okay okay new plan new strategy kill the ones with stone before anything else they are bad all right so so far so good on this next one we get a crit on this gorgon very nice you know they might hit us here but you know we still got a lot of health they don't have a lot of hit rate oh we do get hit but we're taking out the ones with stone first so that should be good there's reinforcements that arrive but you know i'm just gonna one shot these guys this guy should also get one shot you know get a crit for insurance purposes Let's skip ahead here a little. Because these spiders aren't going to be really a problem at all. Oh, that one was bad, though. Okay, look, let's look. 2 HP? Do we have any potions left? Uh, let's. I don't think we do. I don't think. I think we're all out. I think we used all our vulnerabilities already. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Okay, and we get hit. All right. So, at this point, I had been messing around a little bit. And I was sticking to vulnerabilities because I just wanted to test out uh, how long I would have to hold out before using elixirs. But this is the point where I decide, okay, we're going to switch to elixirs. It's much safer. We can't get too many hits by these Gorgons because they do about a third of our health here, which is pretty bad to almost half of it. So we, we do want to be more careful here. So I do another attempt. And then now that I have the elixirs, everything goes fine and yeah the moment i made the adjustment everything goes a-ok -okay. take out the stone guys beforehand and slowly make our way through the map and we we get it it's not a walk in the park but you know the struggles teach us a couple of things don't be too arrogant overconfidence will definitely be an insidious killer you know you you will you will get caught by it uh chapter 19 again very easy i do try to do a chapter 13 strat where i go kill the boss to save up on a couple of turns but doesn't work well with picking up mantle we're a little slowed down we get surrounded and we die so we end up just waiting on the throne the amount of turns we need and we are good sitting our butts on that damn throne chapter 20 comes around and here i think the berserker class actually came in extremely handy and made us save a lot of time because as you can see i'll be traversing the mountains to skip like 90 percent of the enemy reinforcement and just get to morva not that ross would have struggled with any of the reinforcement but it would have taken up a lot of our time so it's nice to shave off those turns in that time and be able to just move across and get to the boss right away you know however morva will be a close call with 37 damage and quite a good hit rate which doesn't bode well for the zombie dragon ahead or even you know for mantis so we'll go with the dragon axe here because i'm kind of scared of losing garm uses i want to save as many as possible because i don't know how the final boss is going to go i'm a little hesitant i'm a little scared of how this final level is going to go because our res is so bad a little bit of an aside morva and the zombie dragon as a lot of you guys mentioned in the comments in the last video they actually ignore your defense so they deal true damage so thank you to all of those who let me know about that because i was not aware of that detail so if you didn't know morva and zombie dragons ignore defense uh they do true damage so you're gonna need luck a little bit on your side every time you come up against them in some way shape or form or you know enemy phase and heal and here folks we have the final chapter and it's an interesting one with ross because his low res will make leon actually kind of a challenge and his speed will cause him to not necessarily have the best avoid in the game which will be a little tough when it comes to the zombie dragon right here so as you can see, he does deal 32 damage to us. We do go for the Dragon Axe here, which I'm a little confused by. Hopefully we get a dodge here because if he hits us, we die for sure. And as you can see, Dragon Axe, not the play. Should probably go for the Garm. We get the quick game over over here, but it's fine. So we'll try him again, but this time of Garm because Garm is the weapon. Yeah, we can almost two shot him. One HP off, but we do get better hit rate and we get that nice crit but if it wouldn't have hit we would have better avoid with garm than with the dragon axe so you know don't be stingy at this point in the game you won't use your 30 uses of garm so feel free to use it when you need to use it make your life a little easier don't do like me but yeah let's skip ahead to leon here you're gonna see me experimenting and you can see he can do 40 damage to me and hit for 65 percent chance and my crit isn't that high so i can go for that but if i get hit i'm kind of screwed i need to hit him a multiple time so my thought process here is i will go for the killer axe instead to up that crit chance you know maybe get hit but if we get a lot of crit we can take this man out i think so as you can see here the killer axe we do not have a lot of damage not a lot of avoid but it maybe if we get enough crits on going our side 
we may get lucky we do enemy phase an elixir here and we we hopefully soak up a hit all right here goes leon oh that's gonna hurt that's gonna hurt. okay we get hit we have 20 health no crits oh that's bad no oh okay and the gorgon takes us out that's okay let's 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 skip ahead to leon again you know let's take a minute to get back to my meds because cl clearly 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 it's not gonna be that easy all right so we get here again we try the killer axe strategy one more time enemy phase and leon it's our time that we're gonna get hit here for sure we dodge and we get a crit okay now we can take him out if we don't get hit by all those now we can take him out we dodge this this is fine get this guy out of here i think i crit very nice i think we can switch to garm here and just one shot him and take care of business right here come on move ahead you gorgon don't stone me oh don't you dare oh that was very that was too close for comfort and even if you hit me i don't care and you get crit here you go get out of here buddy all right leon you and me and here it is that's 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 leon taking care of i don't know why i checked the steel axe i think it was disrespect i want the disrespect. okay i go for the steel axe out of pure absolute disrespect and i still dodge him another time what this is insane okay first time for mantis okay let's walk up to this man let's see what you can do killer there's no shot at the four damage there's no shot now i'm scared a little but you know let's try four mantis and, and we'll see what happens. Let's try Garmin. We'll see what happens. Okay, 33 damage, 9% chance to crit. We may do We can take two hits here. We can take that 27 twice and take it twice and then kill him. So there is a chance for us here. We can get lucky. We hit him once and we do dodge. No, we get a crit. What? Did we just first try for Mantis? That is insane. We hit a 9% crit and dodged a 54% chance to hit to kill this man. Holy crap. I was not expecting this. I was expecting to take a hit and then kill him. I was seeing the victory. It was pretty safe to say that I was going to be able to hit, maybe dodge one of them. Maybe I have another attempt because I was going to get hit more times than once and that things are not going to go my way. But overall, I was really thinking that we would win this, but not in this way. I was really not expecting that 9% crit. We wouldn't have been able to get that 9% crit if we weren't a Berserker class because we did get that 15 plus and Formantis' luck is really high. So he probably was able to avoid a lot of the crits other classes do and it's just because of the berserker class here before low skill that we manage to get that so i'm very happy about the way everything turned out we managed to beat this game in 450 turn which is about half of what erica did this is insane and also um almost six less hours in erica of nine hours and 52 minutes almost six less hours so i still don't know how i'm gonna class these but i can tell you with certainty that ross goes above erica in the tier list he had an easy time to and through only at the start did he struggle he had a little bit of a hard time there and at the end there there was some growing pains we got we had to rely on a little bit of luck because leon is a little tough there but it did go our way eventually so at the end of the day there's no debate ross is ahead of erica really fun run really interesting but extremely easy in my opinion so guys don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content like this i'll be doing a bunch of different solo runs in fire emblem games all throughout the series my goal is to do every character in sacred stones so thank you guys for watching love you all very much don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more and i'll catch you all in the next video thank you all for the support and bye bye